The Democratic National Convention's opening day comes one month after President Joe Biden dropped out of the 2024 race. Since then, much has transpired. Vice President Kamala Harris has risen as the Democratic nominee and has selected Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her running mate. Biden is set to speak tonight. Other headliners this week include former presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. They mm. invited Governor Hochul, too. They're making all kinds of mistakes. I'm excited to see uh, someone I've worked with and a friend of mine, John Russell, was invited to speak, which I think just goes to show the DNC understands that they will lose their Democratic base if they're not engaging uh, working class people, pro-union people, pro-labor people, especially those in Appalachia like John Russell. I'm really looking for there to be some conversation around an arms embargo to Palestine and a, a mm. permanent ceasefire. We are already seeing uh, pro-Palestine protesters interrupted a party last night. Apparently, the uncommitted movement has now been organizing with delegates there for Kamala Harris, who are signing on to this sort of petition calling for an, an embargo uh, or conditions, rather, on the sale of weapons to Israel. Or it's not really a sale, it's just the gift of weapons <laughs> to Israel. Yes, we have, we're expecting 40,000 protesters gathering outside the DNC um, on Monday. Um, obviously, we, as we covered earlier, the pro-Israel people wanted to also protest nearby, and they were not given a permit for that, and they're working out who gets to protest where and how close it can be to the DNC. Um, obviously, the DNC's position is that no one should be protesting. We don't want anyone protesting anywhere near the grounds, um, but uh, there will be, I think, a lot of pro-Palestinian uh, people active and trying to push Kamala Harris on this issue. You know, she's almost been given, I think, a, a new, a, a fresh start from left people on this issue, even though she's been part of the same administration that has very much disappointed the left on these issues. I think there's this view that maybe she's gonna have a different foreign policy or a different approach or gonna be more, uh, more, uh, more inclined to not just give Israel what it, everything it wants than, uh, than Biden was, although I don't know that that will end up being the case. We'll see. Maybe the, uh, the pressure from the protesters will resonate with her. Right. I think that having a panel on Palestinian human rights as a part of the official conference proceedings is good. It shows progress. But it could be classic Democratic, with a big D, Democratic Party politics. It could be them just like, what will appease these people that are mad at us? Well, let's just talk about it. We see you, we hear you, and no action. I think the protesters are there because they know it's not enough. And they know, unless they make them a little uncomfortable and take direct action and disrupt things, that they're not going to do much on it. Right now, there's this division in the Democratic Party where it makes me believe this is going to be the issue that defines the convention. As much as I would like to focus on the economic plan and have the Democrats answer for their record and explain in very simple terms why these policies will work and how they address the current state of the economy and how the current state of the economy is not the direct result of Biden policies. That inflation was caused by the pandemic, and actually the administration has done what they can to address that and has done it more successfully than other modern countries. They need to really answer for their own record the current state of the economy and what their plan is. I hope what's going on now with you know the ceasefire talks and Kamala being sort of unwilling to say she supports an arms embargo and a permanent ceasefire. I hope that that doesn't, you know, take over the rest of the policy issues that they need to address, mm. but it might, and rightfully so, um, because the, the Republicans are, are definitely not going to budge on it. That's why there's not protesters there. In other non-policy news, the DNC convention, it was announced over the weekend, is going to have four celebrity hosts, one for each night. Oh. Those hosts are Kerry Washington, Tony Goldwyn, uh, who are both from, uh, from, that, from the show Scandal, mm -hmm. uh, and Mindy Kaling of The Office and some yes. other things, and Anna Navarro, the so-called Republican host of The View. I would say that three of these people are certainly celebrities, and then there's Anna Navarro, who's just a kind of political commentator on The View, who is not, you know, they're like, oh, we even got, see, Repu I, I love this, Republicans don't like Trump. Here's a Republican who doesn't like Trump. She's not, our, she's 
not a Republican anymore. She was a Republican maybe in one distant point in the past. She does not speak for any Republicans. She speaks for um, never Trump resistance, liberal women, which is totally fine. That's How a, long ago that's was a she important demographic. I, it, it doesn't matter. She's not when a Republican. When Trump started running? Yeah, a lot of people were Republicans, but they didn't want anything Trump represented, and now they're Democrats, and that's just how that works. Yeah, I think that's an important faction of voters they should speak to at the DNC, considering they hope to Oh, yeah, that's fine. They're just not Republicans. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, not anymore. But I think the the left is looking for, specifically, the, the Democrats to take a break from being this party that... I don't know, panders to celebrities and the very wealthy elites and the yeah. very educated To the Kerry people. Washingtons and the... The New York Oldies. Times liberals is what I like to call them. Yeah. Um, they believe in this state of America that it's quite a good country and that everything is just going well and why are people yelling? Some people can't afford basic necessities. Mm -hmm. And that just seems to be something that is spoken to on occasion. That, oh, the American dream is dying and we've got to revive it. How? What is the plan? Finally, Kamala Harris has said, you know, this is the plan moving forward. A lot of people were waiting. She hired, uh, I believe his first name is Jason Deese, who's a quite a good economist. And, uh, you know, Deese is someone who has worked in the financial sector and also has some progressive policies. He really understands how the monetary and financial system works. He was a really good hire. And so I think we might get something from Kamala Harris mm -hmm. that is a good breakdown of why Trump's economic vision's wrong and why ours is better for working people. That's what I think the left left is paying attention to. The celebrities, I think, are a distraction. I think all the people that care about them are already voting Democrat. I mean, I would expect, I mean, I, I hesitate to say the left must be happy because my experience having hosted the show is that the left is never uh, particularly happy, but Kamala Harris is, seems to be throwing a lot of bones to progressives. Um, they're not bones that I think are good. Their policies, I think, are, in fact, very, very bad for our country. But both her and Tim Waltz seem to be doubling down on going even more progressive on economic policy than Joe Biden with, again, specific policies, which we talked about earlier in the show, paying people to buy houses, which doesn't seem like a good idea to me, but is... Actually, I don't even think it's a progressive policy, but I, progressives seem to like it. The war on price gouging, the child tax credit, which at least in that case is trying to undercut uh, a Republican, a, a maybe a Republican policy. There are many Republicans who do support a child tax credit. So she seems to be uh, you know, wanting to move in an economic uh, progressive uh, direction. And if, that, if she's able to sell that vision, then uh, it, it could be to her benefit. Yeah, uh, that you certainly you're, you're certainly right that the New York Times liberals type people want just a continuation of friendly corporate policies, mm -hmm. but more wokeness, which right. is the exact combination of beliefs that are the most unpopular in the country. His name's actually Brian Deese. I don't know why I thought it was Jason. Jason right. Furman was criticizing Kamala Harris this week. Has oh, been I know distracted. Yeah, Obama yeah. guy. Not a great economist. Anyway. So I think Oof. the left is uh, usually very angry because, you know, we live in a, a, a capitalist environment where regular people are struggling, corporate, you know, corporations are profiting more than ever, and they just want to see a change of course from Democrats. I was happy about it, but you get attacked from other members of the left who are like, this is not enough. But it is a little progress and we'll take it. More rising right after this.